I am Christian Buza and I would like to report about one of our recent research works that aims to be a step towards the realization of privacy aware keyboards. This is a joint work with Piroš Kakish and we will present our results at the 10th International Conference on Computer Recognition Systems. First of all, I would like to point out that the dynamics of typing is characteristic to individual persons. That is, it is possible to identify users based on their typing dynamics. This is illustrated on this slide that shows real data. Here, two users are given, user A and user B, and both of these users type the same sentence twice, and the durations of the first 25 keystrokes are shown in these diagrams. The horizontal axis corresponds to the index of keystrokes, whereas the vertical axis shows the duration. With duration of a keystroke, we mean the time between pressing and releasing a key. It is interesting to observe that user A, whenever she types this sentence, has an exceptionally long keystroke at the beginning of the sentence, whereas the other user, user B, has uh, very short keystrokes around the 20th position. This is, of course, just an illustrative example. However, it is important to note that uh, researchers generally agree that, in principle, personal identification is possible based on keystroke dynamics. Of course, how well it works, this depends on various factors, such as the number of users that have to be distinguished, the length of the text that are typed by these users, or uh, it may also depend on the recognition algorithm that is used for uh, recognizing the users. However, uh, in general, uh, user identification based on keystroke dynamics may be desired in many cases. For example, if we pay with a bank card on the internet, currently we only need to type some pieces of information, all of which are printed on the card. And uh, it would be really great if the system would additionally check whether uh, for example, the card number or the name of the owner were typed with the owner's keystroke dynamics. This could uh, increase security. And because of such applications, uh, in several earlier publications of us, we proposed methods for accurate person identification. In contrast, in this talk, we focus on cases in which person identification is not desired. As an example, consider the case of chat-based helplines. Um, assume that you are using a chat-based helpline and uh, this chat-based helpline is supposed to be anonymous and therefore you may ask about your personal problems in an open way. In such a situation, of course, you don't want to be identified based on your keystroke dynamics. Another example, which may be closer to our everyday lives, is web search. Regarding web search, we should first note that the set of keywords that are used by the same user may contain sensitive information. This is illustrated on this slide. Uh, in this example, we consider a fictive user who uses the following search keys. Keystroke Dynamics, Course 2017, Hotel Wroclaw, Treatment Backache, and 50-year-old Handsome Man. Knowing that all of these keywords were used by the same person, we may infer many things about this person. She might be a participant of the course conference, her research is likely to be about keystroke dynamics, and she might stay in Wroclaw for some additional days after the conference. Furthermore, the keywords may tell us a lot about her medical status and personal interests. Of course, this is just a fictive example, but uh, reality may be even worse, because from time to time, some people search for their own names simply because of curiosity. Many of us are curious whatever is written about us on the internet, so we search sometimes for our own names. And uh, if we imagine that one of these keywords in this list was the name of this person, then uh, we would be able to identify this person very accurately and we would know really a lot about uh, this fictive person based on her keywords. And basically this is what 
happened when AOL published web search data together with some user IDs that allowed to determine which keywords were used by the same user. The publication of the data led to a big scandal. As a result, the CTO resigned, two employees were fired, there was a lawsuit, and the case was known among the dumbest moments in business. To sum up, the point I wanted to make is that it may be highly valuable to know which keywords are used by the same user. And one out of many ways to figure out which keywords are used by the same user is to identify the users based on their keystroke dynamics. In order to alleviate this problem, in this uh, talk we introduce the concept of privacy-aware keywords. With privacy-aware keyboard, we mean a keyboard that transmits keyboard events, such as pressing or releasing a key, with small random delays. And due to these small random delays, the softwares in the system cannot observe when exactly the keys were pressed or released. And while doing that, uh, the privacy of our keyboard preserves the order of keyboard's events, of course. But uh, due to these additional delays, personal identification based on keystroke dynamics should become difficult or hopefully even impossible. Simultaneously, the keystroke dynamics data should look natural so that a potential attacker does not recognize that the data is changed. We propose, in particular, two privacy of our keyboard models. The first one is the uniformly random delay keyboard, and the second keyboard model is the Gaussian keyboard model. These privacy of our keyboard models generate the aforementioned random delays according to a uniform distribution or a Gaussian distribution, respectively. In our study, we tested how well this fairly simple idea works. We used the data associated with the person identification challenge. This data set contains keyboard events together with their timestamps. The data was collected from 12 different users who typed the same sentences 548 times in total. We simulated privacy of our keyboards by modifying the original data by adding random delays to the data. Subsequently, we tried to identify users with a classifier. In particular, we used one nearest neighbor with dynamic time warping distance because it is one of the most popular time series classifiers and we consider keystroke dynamics data as time series of the duration of keystrokes, just like in the uh, example at the beginning of the talk. Furthermore, this classifier, the one nearest neighbor classifier, is easy to implement and uh, due to these reasons, even an attacker is likely to use it. In the classification experiments, we use the first five typing sessions per user as training data and the rest of the data served as test data. This is in accordance with uh, the data splits used in the aforementioned challenge. We use the accuracy of uh, the classifier as performance metric. Note, however, that our primary goal is to make user identification difficult and therefore Low accuracy indicates that the proposed privacy of our keyboard models work well, whereas high accuracy indicates the opposite. We compared the accuracy in case of the privacy of our keyboard models with the accuracy in case of a standard keyboard, that is, uh, the accuracy obtained on the original dataset without any additional noise. Furthermore, we compared the accuracy of uh, personal identification with the accuracy of random guessing. With random guessing, we mean an extremely simple recognition system that basically doesn't do anything. In particular, what happens is the following. Whenever a typing pattern is shown to this extremely simple recognition system, it selects a user randomly, and this randomly selected user is considered as the system's guess regarding who typed on the keyboard. Uh, now I was talking about random guessing, just to be on the safe side. So this is not a reasonable recognition system. And this is obvious that any reasonable recognition system should work much better than random guessing. And therefore, if privacy of our keyboards lead to a performance that is comparable with the performance of random guessing, this means that privacy of our keyboards 
do the right job in terms of making person identification difficult. And uh, this is actually what happens. And uh, this uh, experimental results are uh, shown uh, on the next slide. Uh, we performed experiments with various parameters with both privacy aware keyboard models that were proposed um, in this talk. In the left, um, the results for the uniformly random delay keyboard are shown. And uh, in case of this privacy of our keyboard model, the random delay is generated from a uniform uh, distribution in the interval between 0 and d max. And uh, here the classification accuracy is shown by the blue curve as a function of d max. That is, the horizontal axis shows uh, d max and uh, the vertical axis uh, uh, shows classification accuracy. As one can see, with increasing DMAX, the classification accuracy decreases, and uh, this shows that uh, privacy of our uh, keyboard uh, indeed does the right job uh, in this case. In the right, a similar uh, plot is shown for the Gaussian uh, keyboard, which generates the random delays from a Gaussian distribution. In this case, we set the mean of the Gaussian distribution to 100 milliseconds, and we vary uh, the other parameter of the Gaussian distribution, the standard deviation, or sigma, and therefore the accuracy is shown as a function of uh, sigma. And again, with increasing uh, sigma, we observe that the classification accuracy decreases, and uh, it, uh, the classification accuracy approaches the accuracy of random guessing. Indeed, in the end, the difference is not significant, which indicates that privacy of our keyboard uh, work well, that those privacy of our keyboards that uh, use this uh, Gaussian uh, privacy of our keyboard model, they work uh, well. These experiments uh, were performed with uh, the simple nearest neighbor classifier and although uh, this classifier is uh, very popular, you may ask if a sophisticated attacker would perhaps use another classifier. And uh, of course this may happen, so we performed some other experiments in order to be able to draw uh, more general conclusions. And, uh, of course, we could have chosen any other classifier and repeat the previous experiments with that. However, there are so many different classifiers that, uh, regardless what classifier we choose, uh, you could always ask why uh, we didn't try a third classifier, a fourth classifier, or a fifth classifier. And, uh, therefore, instead of repeating the previous experiments with another classifier, we consider the distances between typing patterns of the same user and the distances between the typing patterns of different users. And this is what is shown uh, in this diagram. Although, uh, already in case of a standard keyboard, uh, that is, in the case when there is no delay, the ranges of these distances overlap, it is important to note that the overlap remarkably increases in case of the uh, privacy of our uh, keyboard models. And this indicates that privacy of our keyboards uh, make personal identification really difficult. Now, uh, I would like to uh, finalize this talk and I would like to uh, summarize whatever uh, I've talked about. We introduced uh, the concept of privacy of our keyboards, which are keyboards that transmit keyboard uh, events with small random delays in order to make it difficult to identify persons based on their keystroke dynamics. We performed experiments on uh, keystroke dynamics data and the results were quite encouraging. In the experiments shown in the previous slides, we used the duration of keystrokes. We also performed experiments with uh, the so-called dwell times, that is, the length of the time intervals between pressing subsequent keys, and the results of those experiments justified our conclusions, um, so they led to very similar results as the ones that were already shown in these presentations, and uh, therefore they are not shown separately. As uh, possible uh, future work or as the importance or in order to uh, further uh, 
emphasize the importance of our work, I would like to point out that in the current era of smartphones and tablets, privacy is an increasingly important issue. And uh, such devices, smartphones and tablets, may capture other characteristics of keystrokes as well, such as the pressure or the area that uh, was touched on the touchscreen. And uh, experiments with uh, such data are left uh, for future work. Finally, I would like to mention that uh, privacy of our keyboards may be realized either in software or in hardware. For example, for smartphones or tablets, one could develop a privacy of our keyboard app. This is what is meant with uh, realization in software. In such cases, one should pay attention that uh, the privacy of our keyboard app catches the touchscreen events first among all other apps of the system so that uh, this app can transmit these events with uh, some delay to the other apps of the system. And uh, last but not least, I would like to point out that uh, some useful resources related to keystroke dynamics can be found on our web page, in case if you are interested to, uh, to research uh, on your own in this direction. Finally, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and for watching this video.